What's up, everybody? Welcome to the video. We're here taking a first look at week three of the NFL season for DraftKings and FanDuel. Not going too in-depth here, just kind of my first initial reactions to the entire slate, going position by position, team by team, and checking out all the matchups that we have to offer. Then as we go through, we'll put a lineup more so for a single entry tournament build. And if this happens to be your first time here, my name is Chris Pinnell, and I break down NFL DFS all season long on this channel. If you do enjoy today's content, or even if you don't, so leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet done so. And if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or mean to me in the comments, call me ugly, be rude, whatever it may be, I don't care, but I would love to hear from you. And as always, if you guys ever want access to anything that I do show you here on YouTube, you can get a completely free four week using the link down below in the description or the pinned comment projections, data sheets, optimizer, ownership projections, Discord, all that fun stuff. Link can be found down below. But anyway, let's get into it here and we'll start at the quarterback position. And it looks like we're gonna spend up a little bit this week. We do have some decent 6K options. And we do have Deshaun Watson down there at 6,100 bucks, but that might be pushing it a little bit because he looked absolutely atrocious on Monday night. But does get a good matchup here at home versus Tennessee if you feel a little gross. But let's go up top with the man, the running MVP, Patrick Mahomes, 8,300 bucks on DraftKings, $9,200 over on Fandle. It's a fantastic matchup this week for the Chicago Bears, who were dead last, 32nd DVA versus the pass last season. So far this year, haven't been that great either. And we do have the highest implied team total in the slate at 30.5, 13 and a half point favorites, which might shy some people away, which I get because of blowout risk. But I'm not really someone that cares about blowout risk too much because if the Chiefs are going to blow out the Bears, it's probably not because Pacheco had 200 yards and four touchdowns, although it's a great matchup on the ground. And I do have interest in him in tournaments. But I'm going to assume if the Chiefs are up by 35 or up by 30 points, that's a massive outlier. I'm just saying. It's probably because Patrick Mahomes had a pretty good game himself. And even if it didn't take all four quarters and they're blowing them out in three quarters, the production was still there. It's just not a full game. So it feels like you're getting cheaped out a little bit. But if he gets you 25, 30 points in three quarters, who cares? It's all the same anyway. So I think he's a fine tournament option, but probably only reserved for that. Lamar Jackson's a fine option here at 7700 bucks on DraftKings. He's got a good matchup versus the Indianapolis Colts defense, which is really not much of a defense, very beatable secondary. And with Lamar Jackson, he offers you a ton of upside on the ground. High floor, high ceiling, like him a lot here. And he's fine for tournaments. Probably won't go there in cash games this week. But if you are playing GPPs, he's got nice pairing options with the new rookie wide receiver who looks pretty talented. And then you have Mark Andrews, one of the best tight ends in football as well. Justin Herbert, 7,500 bucks in what looks to be the game of the week here. 54 and a half point over under, one and a half points spread on the road in the dome in Minnesota. And I'm a sucker for dome games, especially with really tight totals and two teams that can obviously be in shootouts. And I love Minnesota Viking games so much because their offense is super fun to play and their defense sucks. So it turns into shootouts and it's amazing for DFS purposes. And the Chargers have a fun offense and their defense is pretty beatable at times as well. So this is like a perfect mixture and I could definitely see this game popping off by quite a bit. 26.5 total here for the Los Angeles Chargers, who might be without Austin Eckler once again. And a 28-point implied team total here for the Minnesota Vikings. So these are probably going to be the top two quarterbacks of the week. Once you factor in pricing, the game environment, things like that. Obviously, Patrick Mahomes, he's my QB1 projection-wise this week. But once you factor in the salary and things like that, Herbert Cousins look very good to me. And it's super easy to stack these teams up. Justin Herbert's got Keenan Allen, who went off last week. Mike Williams, Austin Eckler, TBT, but you have Gerald Everett and some other options here. And then for Kirk Cousins, you have the best wide receiver in football, Justin Jefferson. You have the rookie, Jordan Addison, who's made big plays in both games. He started so far this season. KJ Osborne, KJ Hawkinson, Alexander Madison, who sucks, but he's in the backfield as well. So really fun game. I'm going to be stacking this one up. And so far this year, I know it's a really small sample size, but Kirk Cousins is averaging 42 passing attempts per game, eight yards per attempt, and 354 passing yards per game as well. So yeah, both these guys looking very good. And I'm assuming the ownership is going to be on both of them. Trevor Lawrence, 6,800 bucks. I know we were all kind of liking him a bit last week, but this game ended up sucking. The Jacksonville Jaguars and Kansas City Chiefs one I am talking about, but I think he had like four touchdowns that were called back because the wide receiver couldn't get both feet in. So that was very unfortunate. I feel like Zay Jones had about three of them. If I remember correctly, but uh, I do like Trevor Lawrence here. Bounce back game versus the Houston Texans. They are at home, nine and a half point favorites. But again, if the Jaguars have a great game, I'm assuming T Law did some damage. And you don't need too much here at 6,800 bucks. It's not like Mahomes, where he's about two thousand dollars more expensive, and he absolutely has to get you close to 30 ish points. Trevor Lawrence can get there with just a couple of touchdowns and like 260 yards, which I think is totally fine. But their upside is much higher. Very beatable defense. 
Jared Goff, 6,500 bucks. Detroit's playing a home. I always like them a home in the dome facing the Falcons defense, which not as bad as some teams, but definitely not one I'm going to shy away from here. And so far through two games, I know it's a very small sample size, but Goff is averaging close to 300 yards passing. And you have great weapons to get the ball to. And Alvin Ross, Sam Brown, Jameer Gibbs out of the backfield, who hopefully should be used more with Dave Montgomery's departure for at least a few weeks, he says. You have Josh Reynolds, who's looked great through two weeks. And some other guys as well. Cleve Raymond, I think, caught a bomb, I think, off a flea flicker, if I remember correctly. But Goff's viable in tournaments. And then Deshaun Watson, if you're feeling icky, there's no Nick Chubb. I know Jerome Ford looked good, but they might be throwing the ball a little bit more than they intended to throughout the rest of the season. And this is a very beatable matchup versus the Tennessee Titans defense. Jerome Ford will be pretty chalky this week, despite that. Although, obviously, Joshua Kelly was last week, and it didn't work out too well. I'm not saying it's the same exact situation, but it is kind of similar in a way. Just based off of price and, and a good offense and things like that. But I don't hate Deshaun. I don't trust him at all. But if you're playing tournaments, you got to get gross sometimes. That's 6,100 bucks versus a very much so pass funnel defense with some good weapons. I don't mind it. All right, so moving over to DraftKings here. And I've gotten comments before, but I don't do it for FanDuel. It's like, it's not always the same exact thing, but a lot of it is the same players. There's a lot of overlap. I just want to take time to do two lineups. Don't copy paste this, guys. It is Tuesday afternoon. A lot's going to change, and you shouldn't be copying lineups you see on YouTube anyway. But let's go down here. I'm going to pick one of the quarterbacks from the game of the week. I'm assuming other people that do these kind of videos are going to do the same thing, but I don't care. I'm rolling with it. We're picking Perk Cousins here, 6900 bucks. Obviously, we're going to be married to like a Justin Jefferson. You don't have to. You could play an Addison or a KJ Osborne to be different, but more than likely, we're going to end up with Jefferson. So we're going to probably have to spend down a running back because of that. But speaking of those guys, let's go right to it. And like most weeks, whether you want to spend up, go in the middle, or down low, we kind of got you covered. Just depends on your roster construction. For me, in this specific build, I'm going to have Justin Jefferson, so I probably can't play Pollard or Bijan Robinson, but they are fine plays here. Pollard comes in at 8K, Bijan at 7,800 bucks. Pollard makes a lot of sense from a game script point of view. They are uh, 12 and a half point favorites on the road here versus Arizona Cardinals, which not too concerned about the Cowboys versus the Cardinals. They should be able to blow them out or at least be up multiple scores in this game. 28 point implied team total, so there's a lot of touchdown equity here. And through two weeks, I mean, Pollard's averaging on 20 touches on the ground, and we know he's viable in the passing game. So the floor is there, the ceiling's there. Definitely like Pollard if you can afford him. Bijan's got a very nice floor considering he has a 27% target share this season, which I know is not a ton because the Falcons don't throw the ball that much. But still, if you're going to give me five and a half targets per game, I know it's only a two-week sample size, but it looks like he's going to be involved in the passing game. We know how talented he is. It's a good matchup versus Detroit, the three and a half point dogs. And if you are stacking up the Lions, I think Bichon's a fine runback option if you don't want to play Drake London. Uh, Travis Etienne here at 6900 bucks. I believe he's a little bit banged up, but assuming he's good to go, great matchup versus Houston. We know how bad the run defense has been for a few seasons now. And they're nine and a half point favorites at home, 27 point implied team total. I think he's a very similar play to Pollard, but he's at $1,100 discount. I'm not saying he's as good of a play. I mean, he's not going to project the same, but you are getting $1,000 off and they should be able to put up a lot of points. And if you look at really the implied team total, the spread, I mean, I do think they end up looking pretty similar here. The volume might not be the same, but production should be good on both of them. Jameer Gibbs at $6,600. Apparently the coach hates him so far this year, just not getting the touches on the ground, only averaging seven per game so far. I believe it was seven in both games, but he did have nine targets last week, which is incredible. So we will take that any day of the running back position, and we know how much of a force he can be. It's not like he's not talented and he's just getting useless targets. When Jameer Gibbs gets the ball, he can make some magic happen. And the big news here is that there's going to be no David Montgomery, although I think the coach said he's day-to-day. -day. Montgomery said himself he's going to be out like three weeks. So assuming he is out, it's Craig Reynolds. They brought in, I think his name is Zonovan Knight, Craig Bam Knight from the New York Jets last year. And then we have Jameer Gibbs. I'm assuming Gibbs should be the most valuable running back in this backfield. Hopefully we get an uptick in usage. If we do not, I guess we riot. But assuming that's going to be the case, if we can get a handful of targets and like around 10 carriers on the ground, that looks pretty good to me at 6,600 bucks. So I will take that. I think he's a very good play. James Cook at 6,400 bucks. Had a big day on the ground last week versus the Las Vegas Raiders. Six and a half point favorites on the road here in Washington. If he's going to give me 15 plus carries, I will take it at 6,400 bucks. He's not a sexy play, but there's touchdown equity. And if you can get a couple of targets, I will take it. Ken Walker, 6,200 bucks, five and a half point favorite at home versus the Carolina Panthers run defense, which if we look at how they performed last year, kind of mid pack, 18th DVA versus the run, 14th versus fantasy running backs. I don't want to switch that over to this year's numbers yet, just because it's such a small sample size. And a lot of that depends on 
the matchup and the players that were playing. Because if you were a team that faced Travis Kelsey, not saying this year, but you're obviously going to be really bad versus tight ends in a small sample size. So hopefully that makes sense to you. But I do think Walker makes sense in tournaments. A little bit easier to fit in over on DraftKings compared to FanDuel, it looks like, at the price discrepancy. Isaiah Pacheco, if you are not rolling out the Chiefs passing attack, it would make sense to get exposure to them in some way just because they're going to put up a lot of points, very high total. And Pacheco pretty much checks all the boxes. Now, he doesn't really get too involved in the passing game, which sucks, and there is other running backs in this backfield. But when you have a 30.5 implied team total, you're a 13.5 point favorite at home on pretty much the best offense in the NFL, at least the best quarterback. Hard to pass it up in GPP, so I do like him there. And over on FanDuel, if you can just get some cheap touchdowns, which, you know, Touchdowns count a lot more over there because you're not getting the PPR points. It's only 5,700 bucks, so get a couple of goal line plunges there and you'll be pretty happy. Joshua Kelly is a prime candidate as a post-hype play that kind of busted, not kind of. He busted hard. You had to play him in cash games last week. It was an awful matchup, and that's why I'm kind of concerned with Jerome Ford this week. But Kelly should be able to bounce back here, assuming Austin Eckler is out. It's going to be a high-octane game, and it's a much softer matchup than the Tennessee Titans. So if you're looking to go back to Cali this week, I think it makes a lot of sense if Eckler is out just because he won't be as high-owned just because we have Jerome Ford here at 4000 And nobody wants to play the guy that busted last week that everyone talked about, everybody played. But if you're playing tournaments, that's usually one of the guys, good guys to kind of target. And then Jerome Ford here, no Nick Chubb. I mean, that was an awful injury, and as a big Browns fan, that was just awful to see so hopefully nick chubb can at least come back not this year but at some point in his career he probably will never be the same but it's going to take a long long time to recover from but jerome ford here he made a name for himself last night looked pretty good had that near 70 yard touchdown run got tackled on like the inch yard line fell over but you don't need much it's a tough matchup versus the titans but if you can catch a couple of passes and you're going to give me 15 plus carries it's a team that likes to run the football i will take it now, it makes sense in tournaments to maybe shy away and pivot to Kelly, who should be lower owned this weekend. I'm not getting any numbers or anything like that. That's kind of an assumption. But they're probably going to add a running back as well. Cam Akers might come back. Kareem Hunt might come back. So that could always muddy the carries around a little bit. But it looks like Ford's going to be the featured back. Just something to think about in tournaments this week. If you're playing cash games, yeah, Ford definitely makes a lot of sense. And moving over to our lineup, like I said, we're probably going to be playing Justin Jefferson. So I don't think I can spin up at the running back position as nice as Pollard or Bijan would look in this build. But we're going to have to scroll down here. And the first guy I want to plug in, because this is a tournament build, so I don't want to go too chalky. I think Pacheco makes some sense here. I'm going to avoid Ford in this one just because of ownership reasons. Obviously a fine cash game play, but just not going to make the cut here. But I don't mind Pacheco. He's at eight carries and 12. Obviously that doesn't sound that great, but if you can give me close to 15 carries versus the Bears defense, that bleeds points to running backs or just first the run in general. 5400 bucks on a team total of 30. It makes sense because we don't have the Chiefs passing attacks. So I want to get some exposure to it in this build. So I feel good about that. And like I said, we're going to avoid Ford. Fine cash game play. But since we have Joshua Kelly here in my game stack of the Chargers and Vikings, just because we play Kelly doesn't mean we can't play another uh, Chargers wide receiver as well. So let's plug him in here. 5400 bucks post hype play. This is in the assumption that Austin Eckler is out. If he's in, I obviously can't play Kelly. And moving on to our pass catchers. Like I always say, we try to keep this as simple as possible. Just look at the quarterbacks that we are using, the game stacks that we like, and just the run back options with that. Obviously, there is fine one-offs for cash games because you just can't stack your entire lineup up because that would be going overboard. But I think you get the idea of what I'm trying to say because if we went individual matchup for each and every single wide receiver on the slate, it would take forever, and a lot of it is a bit of a waste of time. So we have Justin Jefferson up top. That's going to be the case pretty much every single week. And since we have Kirk Cousins in the build that we are going with, we are playing Justin Jefferson. Just no way around it. And then Jordan Addison down there at $5,500 is a fine secondary option as well. Through two weeks, he's been pretty productive so far. Five and a half targets, 66 uh, receiving yards per game. And also has gotten to the end zone twice, which obviously that touchdown rate is not going to continue. But the rookie does look pretty solid. Amon Ross St. Brown, $7,900. I'm not stacking the Falcons in this game, so it would pretty much just be my Jared Goff lineups. If you want to play Sam Brown in cash games just because he's always safe, I don't mind that, but probably only getting paired with Jared Goff for me this week. CeeDee Lamb at $7,700. bucks. do not have a ton of interest in the Dallas passing attack here because I like Tony Pollard a little bit more, but CeeDee Lamb being the alpha dog in this offense as far as the passing game is concerned, he's going to have interest here versus a pretty weak Arizona defense. High implied team total. Someone's going to score in Dallas, and it's more than likely going to be Pollard and CeeDee Lamb. 
Keenan Allen, Mike Williams, both excellent options, but Justin Herbert just loves stacking this game up overall. And the Vikings, as we know, since last year, have been bleeding points to wide receivers. Calvin Ridley is in a nice bounce back spot here. Busted last week versus the Kansas City Chiefs in what was supposed to be a pretty high scoring game. Did not really end up being the case, but he went off in week one. Nice bounce back spot versus Houston, whose defense is not really of anything of concern. And yeah, we know the talent is there for him. And if you are using Trevor Lawrence, Ridley is certainly your number one option. But you do have other guys as well. Christian Kirk had a big game last week. Zay Jones, I think, had like three passes that could have been touchdowns. He just couldn't drag his feet. But he had a big week one as well. So really three options there, plus Evan Ingram that are all viable. Amari Cooper, if you were using Deshaun Watson, he is your number one pairing option there. You really can't trust anybody else. Elijah Moore will be involved, but I mean, Amari Cooper is definitely the, the one guy that I would feel the most comfortable with. And like I said, very beautiful matchup as Keenan Allen absolutely destroyed that defense last week. Uh, Zay Flowers, if you are using Lamar Jackson, you don't always have to stack with him just because he can get it done on the ground himself, but I would prefer at least one option there. And if you don't have Mark Andrews, I think Flowers makes the most sense. 70 yards per game through two weeks, as well as seven and a half targets, which is pretty darn good. Uh, Christian Kirk, I already talked about him with Calvin Ridley, Zay Jones. They're all in the same category. Not as same category as far as projection and Calvin Ridley, but all are stackable options, but they're definitely tier two compared to tier one or Calvin Ridley. Nico Collins has been an air yards darling so far through two weeks. Looking at his numbers, 10 targets per game, 113 receiving yards, a 46.5% market share of the team's air yards, 67% weighted opportunity share, 287 air yards through two weeks, which is only a few yards behind Justin Jefferson, as well as an dot of 14.3. And I think we could be in for a pretty big season from Nico Collins. I know the name value is not quite there, but his price point most weeks, the game script should be pretty good for the Texans just because their defense is pretty poor. And overall, it's obviously not the best team. But CJ Stroud looks competent enough to get these guys the ball, and he's not that bad. So if we're going to be chucking the ball most weeks, Nico Collins, Tank Dell at their price points with Noah Brown, obviously on the IR. I think these guys make a lot of sense a lot of time. I actually played Nico Collins in cash last week. He was only 8% owned. I was not expecting 30-some points, but I'm definitely not going to be opposed to it. But as a big dog here, I think he makes a lot of sense. I like Nico once again. I'll take the air yards all day. And then Tank Dell, he's really cheap as well. Seven targets per game through two weeks. Had a nice week last week. I think both are fine. It's just cheap options to fill out the rest of your lineup or as run back options in Jacksonville stacks. Drake London, fine run back option if you're using Detroit guys, but it's pretty much about it. I know he's always a target share hog, but I never really get too excited about the Falcons offense as some of these other people do online. And then we have Josh Reynolds, who has surprisingly been pretty darn good. Now he's 7,000 bucks over on FanDuel. Only $4,200 on DraftKings, so it looks a little bit more appealing there. But through two weeks, I know we're dealing with small sample size, but roughly 75 receiving yards per game, six targets, and he's gotten to the end zone twice. If we're just looking for a cheap option with Goff and you don't want to go to Sam Brown, if you just want two options, I think Reynolds is fine. And moving back over to our bill. I've been hinting at this about 12 times here, so let's just plug in Justin Jefferson at 9300 bucks. It's going to eat up a large chunk of our salary, but we're just going to have to learn to deal with it. I would like to get a run back option from the Chargers offense. I realize I already have Kelly, but that's just the cheap running back play. So let's find another. And while I would love to play Keenan Allen, he's 7,600 bucks. And I just don't think that's going to work because if I plug him in now, that means we have 3,800 left, which it might work, but it's probably not going to be too pretty. So let's move down to Mike Williams. He's going to be due for a big game at some point here. And I could easily see that happening versus this Vikings pass defense. So it feels a little bit better because we still have over $4,000. And once you factor in cheap tight end, cheap defense, it definitely doesn't look as bad. And the most exciting part of any video is always tight ends and defenses. Uh, Travis Kelsey, if you have the money for him, by all means, go for it. Nine targets in his first game back into the end zone as well. If you're using Mahomes, you pretty much have to stack with Kelsey. And this is not a bad price point. 7200 bucks is pretty low for Kelsey. So definitely does not look as bad as it could as around $8,000. TJ Hawkinson, if you're stacking this game up, if you're using Kirk Cousins, he's just a target hog. Like I said in multiple videos, has not had less than six targets in the game with Kirk Cousins and just went off last week. Decent chunk in garbage time, but it all counts the same. Mark Andrews, if you were using Lamar Jackson, can't really see myself wanting off, one-offing Mark Andrews, but obviously one of the better tight ends in football. And if you can't get to the studs, we have some cheap, media-ish options here, like Evan Ingram, Sam Laporta, and Zach Ertz. Ertz is on here just because he's going to get targets and they're going to be trailing in this game. Obviously not a good matchup, but 3,500 bucks and he's had nine targets per game so far through two weeks. I'll take it. San Laporta, the rookie, has looked pretty solid. Getting about five targets per game so far around 50 receiving yards. Not bad at all. I like this game stack, so Laporta's fine at 4K. And Evan Ingram, part of your game stack. I hate to keep saying the same thing, but all, all it really comes down to, I mean, 
all these tight ends, they're not that great. And if you're not, unless you're getting Kelsey or Hawkinson, so just kind of correlate it with your lineups and then just hope they catch a couple of balls. And that's really as far as you can get. Just make sure the guys that are actually on the field getting targets and not just out there blocking just because they're cheap doesn't mean they're always going to be playable. And when it comes to defense, the first thing I always do is just scroll all the way down and look for the first viable defense Vegas wise, just looking for a low total here, playing a home or something like that. I tell you right now, anything below 2,800 does not look pretty at all. All high totals here, so we'll probably have to avoid the absolute cheap defenses. But after that, it gets a little bit better. We have the Jets at 2,800 bucks versus New England. Low total here, only a 37 point over under. That's the lowest of the week by a lot. So I think the Jets are viable, and they actually have some good pieces on defense, and I'm not scared of Mac Jones, especially with him on the road. Bills defense versus Washington, another low total there, six and a half point favorites. So obviously there's going to be some other fine ones, but the Bills and Jets make the most sense to me. Definitely probably going to be the best pump per dollar, so I'd probably just end up picking one of those two. And then knocking out the end of this lineup here, let's plug in one of the cheap defenses just to kind of see what actual salary we have to work with. I guess I'll roll with the Bills here at 2900 bucks, although the Washington Commanders have not looked too bad offensively so far this year. Might be with the new OC, whatever it may be. They've been putting up some points. Now we have just under 5K left. I would love to play Nico Collins or Tank Dell. I feel like if we go the Tank Dell route, it would open up the salary a little bit, but I want to double stack with Kirk Cousins. So I'm either going to be using Jordan Addison or I'm going to use TJ Hawkins. And if I use Hawkins in here, that's only 3,800 bucks for the last two spots. So I feel like going with Jordan Addison, it might make a little bit more sense. And I believe he is, yeah, 5,500 bucks. So that makes it a little bit more doable. I think Tank Dell makes sense as a cheap option there just to try to get some exposure to a cheap receiver that's going to get a lot of targets, I think makes sense. So we have 5000 bucks in the tight end spot. Doesn't leave me with a ton, but it gets me some of the cheap options. And actually, Evan Ingram wouldn't be bad because it kind of gets a little mini stack there with Evan Ingram and Tank Dell in that game. So overall, I think the roster construction is decent. We have Kirk Cousins paired with Jefferson and Jordan Addison. It's going to be ran back with Mike Williams and then also Joshua Kelly, kind of. Isaiah Pacheco to suck up that KC offense. Someone's going to score points there. And since we don't have the passing attack, it makes sense to play him. We have Evan Ingram and Tank Dell, a little mini stack going on right there. I know it's a super exciting mini stack, but it works. And then the Bills defense, they're, they're there. Low total and it fits. With that being said, guys, that's all I got for you today. I hope you did enjoy. And even if you didn't, consider leaving a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet done so. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, leave them down below. I'd be more than happy to get back to you on my core plays video up later on in the week. I wish you all the best of luck, and I'll see you all next time.